All right, what's up, everyone? Another episode, special episode, Plan Xbox Podcast. I am your host, Best Bot Kid Smooth, and I have Attic in person. So we get to share a single screen. Uh, you guys just wrapped up packs and uh, Sacred Symbols 300, which was a uh, awesome experience to witness live. How to? How was that? It was. It was an interesting thing. I've never done a show in front of people uh it was about 45 minutes i will say at the very beginning when i first started it was you mm -hmm. know kind of kind of rough but after i started really getting comfortable then you know it got a lot better but you know performing in front of even thousands of people on youtube and performing in front of 600 people on in person it's a different experience for sure that that was crazy. Like I, I did like how like some of it like even though Yas Yas section Yas session was about forty five minutes. So that's about not even ten percent of a standard <laughs> ILP episode because you guys can go like three four hours. Uh, but I like how you guys maintain the essence of the podcast, the intros, um, and I still feel that the audience there got a a good sense of what the podcast is, you know, because your your podcast can go maybe an hour if it wasn't for the super chats. <laughs> yeah, and not to mention the intros. You know, mm -hmm. people criticize our intros a lot. Uh, definitely understand that. You know, there, there's this thing is not a podcasting isn't like a blank slate. Like there's different ways of doing. It. Yeah. So you know, it, it is what it is. But I do think it was. A good experience i think for the most part i had people coming up after the show mm -hmm. that was like you know what i've always watched sacred symbols but i never really went over and tried iron lord's podcast but after seeing your guys's live performance I'm, I'm gonna be there more now that's awesome that's awesome so i saw a lot of people recognize you guys um like you know stop you stop uh cognito uh king david and everything uh that was cool. We recorded a, a, a couple clips that I'll be uh, putting out. We were able to do a few skits and um, was able to do something special with King David. Um, and then I know you guys got a lot of content coming out. Pretty much the episode has to air, right? Um, and that, I'm assuming that's going to be on Sacred uh, Symbols uh, Collins channel. Yeah, it'll be on the Patreon first. Okay. And I don't know if they'll ever make it like public, uh, but probably eventually they will make it public. I'm sure they'll be, they should. It's, it's good marketing material for if they do it next year, get more people interested in going. Um, so today we're not going to go like a super hour or anything like that. There's not really a lot to talk. There's not about a lot to talk about. No, Xbox hasn't. You know, there's a couple of things that's been in the woodworks, and that's you know Phil Spencer comment his uh, on like an Xbox handheld potentially somewhat. The, uh, there's the toys for Bob like officially toys for Bob's. Uh, officially a signed agreement with uh, Xbox uh, for their next game, which is probably going to be Spyro or Banjo. What do you What do you think? Spyro, because they were really ha having a lot of vibes towards Spyro. I think they, you know, they did like a lot of jokes that related to Spyro mm -hmm. uh, on Twitter. Uh, so I think that's that's probably what it's going to be. It's going to be Spyro. Yeah, okay. Um, now. When when their news broke when they first went independent, it kind of rubbed a lot of people the wrong ways. Like Xbox just bought the studios and the first studio goes independent, which is Toys for Bob's, which a lot of people wanted because they were the first. There were it's a studio that's not a Call of Duty studio. It's uh, the one where we would likely get a separate IP outside of Call of Duty from Activision, and um, when it kind of rubbed us all the wrong way when they went independent, it's like okay, well, what's the point? Because how I look at it is like then the value of the acquisition just should go down with each studio you lose after yeah, it. I feel like that. they bought a studio just to let it go. Like, and, and, and that's why I do feel that there was a real chance the studio was going to get shut down. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft, instead of shutting them down, they let them spin off independent. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that required a lot of money to be exchanged between them and Xbox. Or it was like a... If we do this, you're signing a contract where X amount of games come to Game Pass day and day. Uh, so th there's a lot of different things. Uh, you know, I don't think any form of 
things was leaked showing that there was monetization value switched between them and Microsoft. Because to me, buying a studio, unless they got some of that that Activision money, yeah, I'm kind of curious on how they afforded that. You know what I'm saying? Because it was probably going to be a lot of money to just buy the the studio out like that. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, that's 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 true. Like the thing is, is that how do you think? Because typically, by because what's the name? Uh, uh, what's the the one that studio that just em, was it not Ember Labs? Um, Embracer. Embracer. Group. Saber just bought themselves out, right? Yeah. Um, but it was but that was like hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, it, but I do feel like maybe I think that was a little bit different because Embracer Group probably has some people that help back up that deal. Mm-hmm. And I think Embrace Your Group, for some reason, I feel like Saber got more money on on, on the back end because they've been making a lot of stuff here yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah. Like Toys for Bob ain't really made too much besides Crash Bandicoot Four mm-hmm. and assisted with with Call of Duty. So where where are they getting those millions of dollars to separate? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe Unless Microsoft money was like one of the last reasons they did it. I, I do feel like this is one of their. You know, examples of we don't need all of these studios. Uh, and as long as they're in Game Pass, we don't need them exclusive either. Uh, so that's a good way of separating them from them. Mm-hmm. So when they do announce their game as multi plat which was probably going to be multi plat in the first place, yep, yep. They, it, that, it, that bad image doesn't come on them. Yeah. That's the, which is, so a lot of, a lot of people would say uh, the Thunder... From Xbox is um is a uh, dwindling. A lot of the, the the thunder for Xbox is uh dwindling. Yeah, because of the ever since the podcast. Well, see, here's the thing. Like, I saw Colobro put on Twitter, mm-hmm. and he was like, he thinks that the hype for the Xbox brand is dead. You did a video on that. What's your opinions on that? Because we haven't really talked about that yeah. a whole lot. Yeah. I've been traveling for like a week and a half at this point. Yeah, no, I, I'm i in agreement with him. You know, and the thing is, and I've been a participant of the whole Xbox hype, like not having the Xbox hype, you know? Like, I haven't been talking too much about it. You know, again, the whole the round table they did to uh, announce their multi-platform thing that they're doing, even though it's their four ga- uh, four games, or not really believing that it's just going to be four games. It, it feels like uh, the end. That's what it feel. It feels like. So the thing is, it's just it's a coping period. So people aren't as hype. And it's the, the crazy thing is, we're only in March. It's not April yet. We're only in March, and we had the Xbox uh, uh, de- developer direct in January, right? And we had that other one. And thing. then we had the yeah. So my thing is, there's the crazy thing is. There's games coming, intriguing games coming. You know, Indiana Jones looks good, Hellblade, Avowal. I'm interested in all three, but the hype isn't there because that the love and the care isn't there because they people don't value them because they're not. They don't it's, believe it's they'll be exclusive. It's because their wall guard is coming down. Yeah, it's like look at the end of the day, people can say what they want. PlayStation gets a lot of the captivating things because, for the most part, even though stuff's coming to PC. At day one, it's very clear if you want that experience, you know where to go. Yeah. But now we don't really know, man. And I think the unknown is more terrifying than them going itself. Like, you know, if they're going to do everything, because they really want you to think, and they did a lot of unique phrases and unique wording, where they truly want you to believe it's just going to be four games. Yeah. And I think the communication... I think the fact that stuff like this has happened before, not to this degree, but the Ori thing happened. I think low Xbox sales. Mm-hmm. The fact that you know now it's uh, it's been rumored by people that have good track record mm-hmm. that Starfield's coming next. Xbox is this hat has themselves to blame because we said this before this was officially confirmed. We said if this is true. They need to really think about it because this is one of the very few things you can't undo once you start it. Yeah. And I do believe that they're going to regret this later on down the line. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it, it has, it's had an impact, a communal impact 
um, on it. And it, it's just, I'm kind of just, I'm at like a whatever point. Um, I disagree with the, the decision because, I, again, um, for my uh, selfish reasons, but I'm, I'm, I still don't personally, I don't like the decision, but I no longer care. I don't either. I've yeah. gotten to the point, man, where it's just like, look, like, there ain't nothing we could do. Yeah. Clearly, Microsoft has made this decision themselves. I do believe that they're going to go through with it 100% now because, I mean, why not? Grounded is clearly looking at it in a better spot. You have Sea of Thieves being one of the, the, the highest, highest pre ordered games on PlayStation. Games. Yep. So, like, if they're seeing the money there, why stop? But the thing is, is the damage is being done long term not short term mm -hmm. long term right now you're not going to see the damage well they're seeing the damage on a console and they're, no, they're, they're seeing the damage on pc right now at short term it did it, it did no damage to the xbox ecosystem putting their games on pc mm -hmm. but now we're eight nine years past that or probably not that far and how many people we know last gen like bg had an xbox don't have one this gen yeah so you are already seen. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, they, they are like the the thing is is that so their next they have to. I feel like their next move. Uh, I mean, the hand if they do a handheld, I mean that it's got to hit. It has to hit right. And I I still think they should still do consoles, but they I feel like they have to do something to make people want their platform. But the problem is, I feel like everything. Like the Xbox Series X and S were very compelling uh, consoles. Um, just Microsoft sucks at marketing. They suck at marketing. I don't even think it's the marketing, man. It is the marketing. Because the, the thing is, is that I it, think it's the games. I, 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 but I think their games are good this time the, around. The, but the thing is, is now it's 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 pointless. You, right now, you're you're gonna have these games like Hellblade come out, Avowed come out, but no one's gonna be talking about the quality of the games. Even if these, if the game does really bad, people are gonna clown on it. If the game does really good, what are they gonna say? Mm -hmm. They're gonna say, "Well, it doesn't matter. It's coming to PlayStation." Anyway. True. True. When Blade was announced, a new superhero game yep. that has never showed its face to this degree, being made by a highly respected studio, Arcane, mm -hmm. because they didn't feel the need to put their logo on that screen. What was people talking about? It was like, is it even coming to Xbox? At they this weren't point? even yeah. caring yeah. about the game itself. They were saying, what's it coming to? Yeah. So that's what's going to happen. Hellblade's going to do well. And instead of talking about how well the game looks, how the well the game's reviewed, yeah. Yeah. people are saying, well, is this coming to PlayStation? Yeah. Yeah. And and that's and that's a shame. It, it, and it hurts to see that it happens um, this way. And obviously, Xbox isn't uh, performing well for... For them to be early in this generation in the game in the consoles not really like selling that well they're year over year you know down um it's it's sad actually because it's, it feels like you know with all the hoopla on you know twitter and uh the whole exclusive things it just really feels like the walls are caving in and that the platform itself as a, as a console dying the platform itself um no. You know, it's fine, but it just it does feel like the console. It's, it, it's I think the ecosystem of Xbox is going to flourish, but the thing is, is where does that end? Or is that the, is that truly the the end game, or are they thinking that's the end game because they feel like cloud com cloud computing, cloud streaming, AI is going to take over the scene and they won't need a console? We've seen time and time. Xbox and Microsoft trying to future proof themselves into a sealed bag and drown themselves. Yeah. And I think this is another one of those scenarios. Yeah. I do think that the Xbox community is probably less hype for the Xbox future than I've ever seen. But at the same time, we in March. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what, what, what's it going to be really to talk about? Uh, people that's people like me and you, we've been covering stuff for years. This is always a slow time, regardless when it is. So I think uh, you know that does need to be taken in place. Uh, just because we're not seeing the hype now does not mean when Hellblade Two drops, we're going to see the hype then. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, and I, but again, I would like them to have a little bit more hype, a little bit more marketing effort uh, between um, uh, with their games. Because the thing is, is that they opened the air uh, with the direct and they got a little bit of noise but that 
sort of been muffled with the whole rumors of them going multi-platform and coming out putting games on Switch and PlayStation, and then PlayStation. Even though these games aren't triple A, or, or I want to say triple A, even though these games aren't like first party, but you know they've been they got the games like uh, Hell Divers Two and uh, Final Fantasy, Rise of the Ronin just came out, and they got Stellar uh, Yams next month, Stellar Blade next month. That was like four games exclusive, and actually that might be the games for, for the rest of the year. Um, four games on that platform that's been really just been owning the media. Um, uh, verbiage over the uh, the past three months, and Xbox, you know, this is supposed to be their biggest year in terms of first party releases, and it's, it's, it's sort of quiet and there is lukewarm. No one's excited. That's it's crazy. No one's excited at the, all for Xbox. It, the thing is, though, is we got to see how the energy is. If Hellblade comes out and it does well, mm-hmm. raise high a uh, reviews, high eighties, early nineties, I think it's going to get. Yeah. A lot of resurgence in the Xbox community. But I'm gonna tell you right now, smooth. If that Hellblade Two comes out and it's like a 79, it won't be a 79. 81, I don't believe that. Well, I don't even think either. But I'm mm-hmm. telling you, what we see now is gonna be a mirror of what we'll see then. Because I do think that will be a huge hit. If after all this bad news, then those games start coming out and they don't hit. Because right now, like what they're doing, if they're timed exclusives. They'll be fine as long as the games are there. Yeah. Because we've seen over and over again that when the games are there, people will go and buy that console because the games are there and that's the games they want to play. Yeah. But if those games, if if they're not being exclusive, and the games aren't there, then they might as well just pack it up. Yeah. I mean that. I, I, it, it it's tough, dude, because this is as for a gamer and as an Xbox fan, I feel like it's my worst nightmare. Hey, this this is a uh, this is PlayStation fanboys wet dream. But like, my thing is, I don't think, uh, but they, they don't, there's no. My thing is, it's not it's not like this is a year where they're dropping like Horizon and God of War and The Last of Us and stuff like that. This is a very weak year. This is a very very weak year. So it's like they're at this point they're just celebrating essentially the death of Xbox, but there's no. You know, Victor or anything good from PlayStation. PlayStation is not doing anything. Um, and I just, and with that, it just it feels like gaming overall just is at a, like a weak yeah, point well, right now. We've said it. Uh, Xbox is the king of finding a rake and stepping on it. They could literally see a road in front of them that is filled with gold, filled with silver, filled with with all the goodies, mm-hmm. and they see a road to the left. And it has a line of rakes, and they're like, "We're going that way. We're we're gonna hit that rake because that's what we do as an Xbox. Uh, you know, in, in rakes we trust is what Xbox should be. Yeah. Moto should be. In, in, in rakes we in rakes we we trust. Oh man, yeah. I mean, they no one. I don't care how many people work in Microsoft. Um, I know they're a, a trillion dollar company, but um. I don't think there's no defense or logic for their decision and how soon they made it. I still think they made this decision two, three years too soon uh, to go multi flat with some of these I, games. I would have preferred to have seen after Avowed, after Fable, after Hellblade, mm-hmm. after they get the marketing to Call of Duty, after mm-hmm. they put Call of Duty in Game Pass. And then when you start to see the results of having these games mm-hmm. in the ecosystem, uh, some exclusive, mo- uh, some not exclusive, most are, because mm. obviously Call of Duty wouldn't be exclusive. Yeah. And then see if you start to see the sales trajectory change. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to. I think uh, this is a colossal mistake. Uh, this could easily be benefiting them. Mm-hmm. It just depends if they're willing to, to make exclusives to the platform or they just go on multi-plot and everything um, you know this is another thing where it's like us as xbox fans and xbox owners we at every corner have being shown that xbox and microsoft cares about everyone else but the people that actually buy their platform yeah agreed agreed i i, I almost feel like they have to kind of like relaunch their console that like I feel like the At this point, the yeah. life cycle of Xbox is so short now. I feel like they need to like relaunch and the way that they handled 
you know what I mean? They handled the launch kind of like, you know, they're, they're, they had a great console. They handled it poor. They had, uh, in the first four years of Series X, they had two years where the games were non-existent. They only had really essentially two good years, which was 2021 and 2023. 2023 had the games. They just didn't hit the way they needed to hit. 2021 had the games. Um, and They won publishers of the, the year. year 2021. Yeah, yeah. But see, the, the problem with 2021 is those games weren't exclusive. The majority of those games were multi-plat because it was the deals mm-hmm. that they had that, in place yeah. with Bethesda. Yeah, it, it, yeah now, that's the... when you look at how successful those games have been, how well they're doing it, you're like, okay, now when they make a new game, those games are going to benefit Xbox. But then when you look at dumb decisions like this, are they? Because we don't know. Because we've seen it over and over again. If you make people choose between platforms and you have compelling software to lead them to it, they will go to it. Mm-hmm. But if you leave with your tail behind your, your behind, in between your legs, in between your legs, and you know that, because to me it just feels like they're not confident. It really does. No, no, um, they're not helping themselves. The thing is, is that Microsoft and Xbox, when when they're losing, you feel they're losing. Like when PlayStation was losing, you didn't feel like they it's were losing. PlayStation, when they lose, they go back to the headquarters. They shut the door, shut the blinds, and say, "What do we got to do to replay, repair this?" When Xbox loses a generation, they they do do stuff, and I do think for the most part, Phil Spencer's vision has fixed the majority of the issues they had. But the biggest issue was always the games, and because and the reason they didn't work on that first is because games take time to be made. But the only thing is, this, uh, the, for example, right, PlayStation for the last two years, believe it or not, had like no games, no games. But pl- they, but the thing is, in terms of the first party, but right, they so. had, but they had enough third party deals and exclusive rights to like second party and third party things that allowed them to survive uh, survive a year where they don't have when where Spider Man's your only first party release, or a year like this where right now there's no first party releases on the horizon. But it still feel like they're dominating because Hell Divers Two is an exclusive, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth is an exclusive, Stellar Blade is an exclusive, and Rise of the Ronin is exclusive. Now these, I don't think any of these games are stellar. Maybe Final Fantasy is like the only one. All the other games are like mediocre to average. Um, but there are games that are. It's a constant flow of game. When Xbox has no first party, they got nothing. There's nothing to back up or to bridge a gap and. Phil Spencer and the Xbox crew aren't aggressive enough to prepare for that. They never prepare for when a gap is going to happen. Like, anybody should have been able to see that 2022 gap uh, coming from a mile away. Anybody should have been able to see that 2017 gap coming from a mile away, and they didn't do nothing to address it. They did nothing about it. They don't care about filling the gap. The only thing they care about is making sure games come in day, date, and game pass. Filling the gap would buy exclusivity on something. But the problem is, is when you have a business model such as Game Pass, you have to pay for the marketing. You have to pay for the exclusivity. Then on top of that, you have to pay, probably might cost more than both, the rights to put that game on a subscription service day and date. So when you add all these, it doesn't make sense business-wise. So they just chose the latter, the marketing in the Game Pass day and date, because I'm sure the exclusivity costs equal to the Game Pass, or maybe slightly more. I don't know. I don't know the logistics behind that. So when you when you have a business model like that, and you're not pursuing those games because it doesn't make sense logically, because you can't put them in Game Pass because they're not going to make those deals. Yeah. Then you're just going to always because remember we had plenty of games that came to Game Pass day and date. Yeah, yeah. But we had no exclusives. And that you know, people sit there and they say, "Well, time exclusive don't matter." Yeah, say that to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth yeah, right now. Yeah, look, Rebirth might not be selling as good as Remake, which was released in the middle of the pandemic. May I add, <laughs> uh, it might not be doing as good as that. But don't get it twisted. People bought PlayStation Five for that game. Yeah, absolutely. People bought, and the thing is, and then people are buying Playstations for Hell Divers too because of the FOMO. You yeah. know. I will agree with most people that when it comes to timed exclusives, not all timed exclusives are equal, but it's stupid to say that none of these games can get generate that kind of energy that people want, you know. Not there are some there are some exclusives that just turn the tide of the fight. 
And uh, and I do think that that's one of them. Yeah. And our food is here. And <laughs> hey, we'll just end. I mean, there wasn't a yeah. whole lot to talk about today. It's a short episode. Next week, we'll be back to regular schedule, guys. Yeah, but I do want to address this one thing. You know, Christopher Drang from, was he from Game, GameIndustry.biz? Uh, he says he's heard from some publishers, which his headline's a lie. It's not some publisher. One publisher uh, of who questioned why they're putting games on Xbox. Their market is PlayStation 5 and PC. And, you know, Xbox hasn't been selling pretty well in Europe, uh, down 47% year over year. Um, is Xbox in trouble when you got mainline publishers questioning yes, whether to put games? Definitely. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. It, these people never spoke like this because they knew that their games was only on Xbox. But when you start posting stuff like Sea of Thieves on it and it's, and it's, it's outselling games that's already on the platform... Then you're going to have the platform holders just like, are you wasting your time because you're not even selling consoles, which is eventually going to lead to software sales, so why even try? I completely agree with them. And it's not even whether or not Xbox is in a good position or not. Mm -hmm. Perception is reality in most cases. Mm -hmm. That's why you see so many people spending so much money on Twitter, on social media analysts, because they know that with the right places and the right time frame and the right message, you can make perception reality yeah. doesn't matter if it's real yeah it's just the the perception on the internet makes it real yeah absolutely absolutely so xbox has to uh get this stuff situated they got to fix uh their uh they gotta they gotta fix their positioning where they stand and they gotta uh really invest back into xbox and his in his in his fans and his customers um because right now they really um they really letting people down um and and it's a shame because this was not the year to do it um, but we're going to end this short. Like I said, this is a short, we want to just show you guys. We got together. We're in person. Uh, we'll be back next week with the traditional episode. Hopefully Xbox drops some good we'll news. Get, we'll give week. you two episodes next week. Yeah. In some way, shape or form. Absolutely. All right. But, uh, thank you. Thanks for coming through, chilling with me. Xbox is the best box and I, I am, am the best, best bot. Good night or good morning. If you're on the other side of the globe, we're out of here. Peace.